and his love is 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 abundantly life is abundantly given yeah. in this love which Jesus offer and the spirit helps us to live the life that God expects us to live yeah. right yes and well, yes I can see this is generating some good discussion yes and yeah um listen to what Jesus says Jesus says no man can come to the father but but by me that's yes. correct right yes and he says no man can come to him mm -hmm. except the father which is in heaven yeah. draw it him yes so he's showing that there is um, the working out of the plan of salvation includes yeah. the Father, the Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we, we as human beings, need to um, learn how this um, affects our thinking. Yes. Yeah? Because in our mindset, if we can get it right, mm -hmm. yeah, we can understand the plan of salvation mm -hmm. better. Because as we come down to the end of time, right. things become a little bit complicated yes. in the spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. But we can navigate our way through because of the word of God. Amen. Yeah. Sister Cindy. Yeah, my elder, you, you spoke about every organization having a mission. Yes. And uh, actually, I went and checked out the Seventh-day Adventist mission right. on the website. Actually, if I had to be in our asked as as an adventist what is the mission yeah. of uh, the seventh i would actually make it probably one sentence it is to fulfill god's mission yeah. yes yes but then obviously the leonard and educated have come up with a good one it says the mission of the seventh day adventist church is to lead people into a personal relationship with jesus christ yes. and to continue as his disciples to proclaim the everlasting gospel Amen. embraced by the three angels message and to prepare the world for christ soon return amen and not only this but i believe that understanding the triune god is important yes because some belittle jesus saying he's a lesser lesser god mm -hmm. or he's a just a good man or a prophet, or a prophet. Mm -hmm. but jesus is emmanuel god with us yes yes god god came to humanity mm -hmm. in jesus yes and the spirit of god is so important and right. vital for success mm -hmm. within our own personal development mm -hmm. and our connection to god right. so what we're looking at we're looking at god three distinct individuals yes but one in essence and purpose okay i hope you've understood that because um, there are many who have different understanding and try to clarify it in many different ways but you just heard it from the elder. You know, when we do mission, it, it has a practical aspect. It needs drive. It needs energy. It needs hands-on. And so we want to look at making disciples. The, the focus of the mission, the, the practicality of it. So we're going to read to, to you St. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Okay, right, fine. Go ahead, elder. Yeah. Matthew, this is from the King James Version, Matthew 28, 16 to 20, and it reads, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus um, came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the, and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Thank you so much for, for that, Elder. You see, you heard Sister Cindy talking about the mission of the church and if if we use the word go as is now the sort of mantra for the seventh day adventists mm -hmm. it's something that is practically applicable mm -hmm. but to go we need someone and we, we refer to the, those people as or us ourselves as disciple mm -hmm. now elder sammy what elements of discipleship can you identify with this passage that elder fritz just read I think, we, I think one of the things we need to focus on in, and is who is a disciple. A disciple is a follower of a teacher. Right. And when you look back at 
you know, last week's lesson, mm -hmm. it was saying the ultimate person who had the mission was God himself. Right. And he, he, he trained us to go forth. And what Jesus came and did to his disciples, mm -hmm. the life that he lived for his disciples, yes. he's now saying, go and tell people. Yes. Go show them what I have done. Mm -hmm. And I will work in you. We spoke, we spoke about the, the triune God. So the triune God now will empower us to live, to, to go out there and work this mission field that as we go out there, who, who, who are we going to baptize them? We are going to baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. But you're not going to only baptize them, you're going to teach them how to make other disciples. And it's by your life and by your precept, your relationship with God, that others can learn of what God has done for you, that they too can see that the blessing of God is in your life and they too will want to live that life according to his principles. Amen. Sister Cindy, you know, in St. Luke 24 and the, and the 47th verse, it says, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name unto all nations, mm -hmm. beginning from Jerusalem. 48, ye are the witnesses of these things. Mm -hmm. We're talking about making disciple the focus of the mission what do you understand from the verses read i love the fact that the mission has a focus because yes. there, are, there are many things that you can pick up from this and confuse it as the focus mm. yes they are um, let's say there is the process mm. and we can be caught up in the process and think that is the, the mission, mission mm -hmm. the yes. focus that is the focus yes so i like the fact that we, we we're actually emphasizing the fact that the focus is to make disciples. Yes. But as disciples of Jesus Christ who have been sent, firstly, we find that the, the text starts by saying Jesus commands them to go to Galilee. Mm -hmm. So the, the one aspect I picked in discipleship first is obedience. Yes. Amen. First, they, had, they were called to go and they went. If you actually read after verse 16, you go to 17, you realize that some doubted. Yes. But yes. one thing I like about that, that even in their doubt, yes. they were still obedient. obedient. They Good. still went. Even when they're confused, even when they had other ideas, mm -hmm. even if they thought something may not be right, they were still obedient to God. It teaches yes. me as a disciple of God that in my Christian walk I may have doubts in my Christian walk I may struggle with certain aspects of faith mm -hmm. but continue to be obedient because right. a disciple has to be obedient but right. then a disciple of God one thing I find that is that we are clothed by the authority of God that came out from from this that's the second aspect I found that we are going by God's authority right a traffic officer stops the traffic in in the road not because he's educated not because he's anybody <laughs> but by the authority that he stands by the moment he puts on that uniform he has the authority to stop england the yes. whole of england so because we stand on the authority of god whatever we meet whatever obstacle we remember whose yes. authority was sent by. And yep. then I've got two. Then the other thing is that we are sent. You see, when you're sent on a mission, you go and do the mission of the one who sent you. We right. all have different ideas of what we need to be doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm one who is always having ideas, many different ones that may not be in the text. But remember when you're sent to do something, you go on that errand. Any other thing you do it in your own time. But this one is a mission and was sent by God. And then... The fourth aspect I picked is that of trust. Mm. Because he says, believe, trust that he will be with you yes. till the end of time. Mm -hmm. If you do not live on that trust, mm. somewhere along the line you think, why are we only baptizing one person? Mm. Yes. Have we lost God's um, authority or his help? Right. Trust that he is with us all the way. Mm -hmm. And that's the life of a disciple. Mm. One that remembers that every other thing, baptizing, teaching, are all uh, characteristics of right. the discipleship process. But then, yes. all we are called to do is to make disciples. Mm. Amen. Mm. Elder Fritz, you know, Jesus commanded us to make disciples mm. of our nation. Yeah. What, what, not an address only to the original 12 disciples, because sometimes, if you do not understand context, you think discipleship is talking about those who are in the Bible. Right. But this is a requirement 
It is a responsibility incumbent on every single member yes. of, of this church. Very true. For Peter, the reason for every believer exists. Yeah. We, have, we have something to do. What do you take from this? Yes, um, if you look at the context in which this was given, yes. they met on the mountainside, mm -hmm. and there was over 500, mm -hmm. as well as the 11 mm -hmm. the disciples that right. met. So they all got the commission, and he said that some doubted. Yes, some was there who weren't fully convinced, mm -hmm. but eventually, mm -hmm. when the Spirit of God was poured out, mm -hmm. yeah, they realized fully what the, um, the God focus. was offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to when Jesus say make disciples, mm -hmm. he's saying that a disciple is one that follows. Right. Like the 12 disciples, they are followers of Jesus and right. they're going to follow him in behavior, mm -hmm. in conduct, mm -hmm. in words. Right. Yeah. So we, when he says to us, go ye therefore and teach. Yes. We must understand that when it comes to teaching, mm -hmm. we teach by precept. Right. And by example. Yes. Yeah? And we must have confidence mm -hmm. in what we are teaching. Mm -hmm. Because um, faith, is the, um, faith is the aspect that helps us overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So if you don't have faith and confidence in Jesus right. and the word of God, you have nothing to teach. Right. Yeah? So mm -hmm. we, we know at this juncture in our history, because most of the Bible has been, um, it has come to pass already. Yes. It's been fulfilled. There's only a small portion left. Right. So we can have confidence that he who began this work will bring it to its full completion. Right. Yeah. You, you know, Elder, one of the things I, 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 I get to understand about the discipleship. Yes. It's that it's relational. Yes. It is. A very important aspect yes. of discipleship mm -hmm. must be relational. If Jesus did not have a relationship with his disciples, mm -hmm. he couldn't send them. Things would be if bad. If you do not have a relationship with anyone, you can't tell them to do nothing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is building a relationship. And if you read the book of uh, um, all of Paul's writing, mm -hmm. when he writes to Ephesians, he had a relationship with the Ephesians. Yes. He had a re relationship with all these people. So he could write to show them mm -hmm. the, the, this, the, the authority that God has given him. Yes. And without that, without that relationship, right. that, 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 it, it would make no sense to send someone no. nowhere at all. Uh, one of the things that impressed me about the commission, it says, and beginning at where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yes. Yep. And it says, although the people rejected him and put him to death, mm -hmm. yet the, the, the gospel commission begins in the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because right. the blood of Jesus is able to save oh. to the uttermost. And there right. are individuals there who need to hear yes. the gospel yes. commission. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, the commission clearly reminds us to go then to all, not to some, yes. to all people everywhere and make them my disciple. The primary goal of, of, of the mission is to make disciples. You've heard it here. Meaning that there should be people who share in the world the message of Jesus Christ. Sister Cindy said it's not just good news, but the good news of Jesus Christ as found in St. Matthew 28. Those who accept the message were baptized and, and were taught to observe all that Jesus commanded. So it's not just being baptized and leave it there. And once you observe, then you become the disciple who will then take the message further. Have you tried that? Have you, have you been doing it? It said, neither the 11 that were commissioned nor the 120 that received power carried out to reach the entire world. So we now, as modern day Christian, has to carry the message forward. We can't just come to church Sabbath after Sabbath and sit down and think that's good enough. We must make disciples. We must take, because you see, within the discipleship, there's, there's, there's reward. That is that eternal promise that we live with Christ. Okay? The Father determined that with his presence, Jesus has the power of the Holy Spirit. And in one part, he tells us that we are all endowed to do that because we're a royal priesthood. We were made, we were called to this duty. So I encourage you today to take up the cross and follow Jesus. And so because there's a mission, Elder, mm -hmm. there's an eternal gospel. Right. 
because we must have the message to carry out. So we're going to now look at Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Okay, Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in mid-air, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, yes. to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the spring of water. Amen, brother. Sister Cindy, you know, a lot of people are afraid to read Revelation because it reveals to us the things that Jesus would desire in us. But what aspects of God's mission can you identify with this eternal gospel? Well, there will never be another gospel. Right. To start there. Okay. There will never be another gospel. That's why we are emphasizing and, and saying it's an eternal gospel. It, that old time gospel is still relevant today. Right. It is the one we go with until Jesus comes. Right. There are many things that are going to come and go, many doctrines, many things. But remember, he's, he, he, this one does not change. Mm. It still stays. I remember as a child, I grew up, Many times you would have you would see campaigns, and most of them would have the theme: "Jesus is coming again." Yes. Are you ready? I would see it on buses, on bus stops, and I'm thinking, "What happened? Have we have people changed their message?" But it's still the same. That's why it's written in Revelation. It started in Genesis, and it's still here in Revelation mm -hmm. that this is the everlasting gospel that started then, and that will continue until he comes. And he then. Uh, reminds us of who this God is. Right. And also in that reminder there comes that there is a judgment. I know that doesn't make many people smile. Yes. But when you realize the person that we are worshiping and what he's expecting us to do, the judgment does not scare us. Yes. Because of who God is. He reminds us that, remember, he's the creator. You yes. see now in Revelation 7, this is the one that we started with. So Jesus did not lose his mission. Mm. It, it, it was the very same. Mm. And us as disciples, we need to stay focused mm. and remember what is this message that he is coming with. The message has not expired. No. It has not reached it. its expiry date. It's still the same. Right. It may seem like it's out of fashion because there are many people who no longer believe Jesus is coming. Yes. But this is a reminder, a friendly reminder yes. before the problem is closed right and that it is an everlasting gospel mm. that will not change Jesus is indeed coming again whether it is on the bus on the billboard or on the street walls mm. he is coming again mm. but as we gather from this aspect of our lesson there is a message mm. in the three angels message mm. about this mission what did you draw from that elder Sammy yeah, for me, just looking back at the gospel, um, the everlasting gospel, it doesn't, and, and as my sister rightly said, it doesn't change. It doesn't go from to be something else. Right. It's the same right through from the beginning. In it, we find that there was a, there's an enemy. God has an enemy. Yes. It doesn't change. It's the same enemy, the same person. Yes. We might go from generation to generation and, 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 and go from era to era. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the word is still the same. That's right. why the Bible never changes. And that's why we get the word as it is today. Mm -hmm. We still have the same words. Um, we still have the same Jesus. Right. There is no other new thing. There won't be a new thing. Mm -hmm. it, the judgment will come, as my sister rightly says. When it will come, we are not sure. But the thing is for us to remain faithful. It is still saying we need to still go out there and make disciples. The necessity for, disciple, for, for bringing people to Jesus is still the possibility that man can still make it to God's kingdom. Right. And if we decide now then, okay, people been saying Jesus is coming long before we were born. It, it, it even been saying before 2,000 years ago. Yes. We are here 2,000 years after, and we're still hearing the saying, it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Because a day with God, a, a, day, a moment with God can be a lifetime with us. 
Right. But it's just a span, and it just shows that, you know, how we accept this gospel and how we deliver this gospel to others who need to hear and understand that God is coming again right. and Jesus died on the cross and is able to save us all and to bring us to God, um, you know, to bring us into his kingdom that we can live with him. This is the hymn of God from day one and it is still the hymn today. Thank you so much, Elder Sammy. Elder Fritz, we're afraid of judgment. Mm -hmm. And you see, within the mission of God, mm -hmm. because he came to redeem us, and because he knows that one central tenet for this message is redemption, that message comes through the eternal gospel. Yeah. How is judgment linked to this message of right. the eternal okay. gospel? Yeah. Now, firstly, I, I would like to say this. The everlasting gospel, yes. it means that whilst there is ever a human being to be saved, right. the gospel is still in right. order. Mm. Yes. Yes? And when we talk about the judgment, you see, the gospel is expanding as it comes to the end of time. Right. Because... In the time before Jesus came as a man, you only had the children of Israel and you had pagans, mm, right. pagan worship. Mm -hmm. But in our time where we are, we have now a lot of churches, religions to deal with. Right. And this is why in Revelation 14, 13, 14, and 17 and 18, it speaks about the mark of the beast. Right. So understanding what God is doing and what God is saying is important because this message, the first angel's message, could not be preached before, eight, uh, um, before 1844 right. or thereabouts. Yes, because it mentions that the hour of his judgment is come. Mm -hmm. The hour of his judgment um, began in 1844. We know that mm -hmm. as Adventists, we believe in the judgment in two phases. Mm -hmm. One, the investigative judgment, mm -hmm. and two, the executive um, judgment. So, because the angel is announcing the judgment, it means that salvation is still available. Mm -hmm. So the message is saying to every human being that we need, we need to come back to true worship, Right. Yeah? And true worship includes that we are totally committed to God yes. and loyal to his commands and his services. Mm -hmm. So it's saying to us that um, what we have to do as individuals is to deal with the issue of sin. Right. Because Satan is um, trying to deceive the world. Yes. And he has a problem with Protestantism. Mm -hmm. And yes. the Protestants that we are talking about is the Seventh-day Adventist Amen. Church. Because why? Because all the other Protestants have gradually gone back over to Catholicism. Yes. So when he speaks about the hour of his judgment is come, we need to understand the sanctuary doctrine. Yes. And that the high priest went into the most holy place on the Day of Atonement. So in 1844, Jesus left from the holy and went into the most holy place. Amen. Yes? So the hour of his judgment is come. It's the investigative judgment. It means that we have to deal with the issue of sin and so that when he comes, he comes to bring his reward. Yes. Either destruction mm -hmm. or salvation. He will yes. take his people to heaven. Wow. So the message of the eternal gospel, Sister Cindy, where you're going to say something. Now, but just before you say, you see, when we take this eternal gospel, it has to have features within it. And one of the features found in Acts 10, 38, Jesus came to the world to live in a, a perfect life. The other is in 1 Peter, or Isaiah 53, 5, 1 Peter 3, 18. He died on the cross to bear our sins, Elder. Then he rose ascended into heaven, and was exalted. That's what the, the, the gospel, the features of the eternal message should be. Yeah. And then at this time, sitting 
and the right hand of his father right. is interceding right. in the heavenly sanctuary. Right. That's in Hebrews 7. Yes. And then we heard it about Jesus is coming again. He will come back to take his people to glory as found in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Right. And guess here's the best bit. Finally, he will establish God's kingdom on earth as in Revelation. Yes, Ezra. Uh, yes, um, also I believe that the first angel is also saying to humanity yes. that we need to come back to true worship. Yes. Because one of the things that has been um, changed is the Sabbath day. It has been changed from the seventh to the first day of the week. Yes. And there are individuals who believe that they are going to, to go to heaven transgressing the law of God. And it cannot it be so. Jesus cannot. The gospel is that we must repent of sins. Yes. And he cannot take us to heaven mm -hmm. while we are committing sin. No. He will save us from our sins. sins. So we need to confess them mm -hmm. and forsake them right. so that we can have mercy. And it's righteous and just to forgive. Yes, Sister Cindy. We were sent on a mission. Yes. And when, as we go on this mission, we need to stay focused. Yes. Staying focused in making disciples. Um, Elder here spoke about the fact that um, the mission is relational. That yes. as well can be a hindrance. Mm. Because when you go, because it's relational, you can get carried away in the relationship, relationship. and forget the focus of the mission. Yes. Many of us are just making friends with the community. Yes. Making friends and we've forgotten to stay focused. Yes. I always give this example of Jonah. I said, can you imagine if Jonah went to the show? And when he got to Dover, yes. he found the Titanic. Mm. Yep. Do you think he would have ever gotten out of that ship? No. <laughs> there are many things, beautiful as they are, the relation, because it's relational, we need to stay focused. Mm -hmm. But then, remember, on this mission, we have been sent with a specific message. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is then the three angels' message. This is then, now we are at the message of the mission. Unfortunately, in this message, there is some things that don't look like they're good news. No. The scary news. But we need to tell the world that there is a deceiver out there. Right. That's correct. And at least we have been given ways in which he seeks to deceive. He seeks to take us away from the right worship. Yes. That is what... It, so if you are going to tell people... if to be disciples themselves that go on a mission but stay focused and as we go there will be somebody who's coming yes. selling some fat cakes that don't look like <laughs> fat cakes yes they will look like them they will taste like them but beware yeah, he them. wants to get you to move from the right worship yes. to the wrong worship yes. and then when you have gone and decided to go astray Make sure you remember there's a judgment to come oh, yes. for those who stayed faithful. So then, on this particular point, we are focusing on the message of the mission, which is the, not only the first angel, but as looking at the three angels' message, is that the enemy seeks to take us away from worshiping yes. God. Yes, there are so many other sins we may commit. I don't want to say small sins because all sins are the same. Yep. But it's saying his focus is to get us away from worshiping right and worshiping the right God. So beware. This is the message that we're taking to the world. And it comes with hope in that God has not left us in this mess. Right. Jesus is coming again Amen, to rescue us. Amen, sister. Well said. It's when believers view their job as part of God's calling on their lives, they add new meaning to their Christian witness. Maintaining integrity, striving for excellence, being trustworthy and reliable, and treating others with respect in the workplace are qualities that can give Christians a platform to share their faith. But the Bible declares that in the last days, men will be, see, yes, Sister Cindy, absorbed in worldly pursuit in pleasure and in money getting. They will be blind by eternal realities. Yes, Elder Fritz, they think they can still go to, to, to heaven being sinful. Christ says, as in the days of Noah were, so shall, 
I'm sorry, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in many days there were before the flood, they be eating and drinking and marrying and giving to marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not only the flood came, they took them all away, so shall it be with the coming of, man, of the Son of Man shall be. In other words, you cannot ignore the, 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 the three angels' message as you will find yourself in quite an uncomfortable comfortable place like that rich man and Lazarus. Pay, take pay care. So quickly, we're looking at the channels of, of, of the mission. And so we're going to read, Sister Cindy, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, and Deuteronomy 7, 6, 11, and 12. Okay, I'll read first Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. It says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. Mm -hmm. And in you, all the families of the earth shall, shall be blessed. Be blessed. Amen. And then I'm reading Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. It says, for you are a holy people to yes. the Lord Amen. your God. Mm -hmm. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, mm -hmm. a special treasure above all the people of the, on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. verse 11 and 12 says, Therefore, you shall keep my commandment, mm -hmm. the statutes and the judgments which I command you today, today. to observe them. Mm -hmm. Then it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments and mm -hmm. keep and do them that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he saw to your fathers. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Cindy, for reading that. Throughout history, God has always had those who faithfully represented his character and in obedience and followed his purposes. God's people are to those who have been called and who have accepted his invitation to be partakers of his grace. All of them have been and continue to be God's instrument for the fulfillment of his mission. We're talking about the channel of God's mission. So, Elder Fritz, what was the original purpose for his people in the Old Testament as read in Deuteronomy and Genesis? Yes, um... Israel was supposed to be the light of the world. They were to show to the world what God is like. Mm -hmm. And um, Satan misrepresents God right. to humanity. Mm -hmm. And the Israelites themselves misrepresent God to the nations. That's correct. Right? So it is, listen to what God says. Abram, come out of your people. Mm -hmm. Leave your family and leave your society. Right? I'm going to take you to a place where I can use you. Yes. Yeah? And it's the same thing. You see, because what we're looking at, we're looking at a type of what shall happen in the end of time. Yes. Because in Revelation 17 and verse 18 and verse 4, it says, come out of her, my people. Yes. So see, we have to come out of Babylon so that God can use us. Mm -hmm. As an example, because what God, what God wants to do through the church, mm -hmm. through Abraham, is to show his marvelous grace. Right. You know, how that through grace we can be restored to the image of God. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And not just to this world, but to, the, um, but to all the angelic mm -hmm. hosts. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because we are the demonstration right. of what grace in Christ can do. Okay. So it will save us, it will restore us, and it will make us an example to the, to the world. So God is going to use us as co-laborers with himself. Right. Right, Sister Cindy. What is, what is it in, in these verses that we read, yes, Elder, coming to you, that, that the channels of God's mission... What was his original purpose? Because we went all the way from Revelation, and now we're back into Genesis and down into Deuteronomy. What is it that God wants us to go back to? And look, we, in schools, we call that back to basic. There's something in this that God wants us to go back to basic with. What is it? 
Okay, so God picks someone just like a parent. A parent can have five children, yep. but may send one to the shop. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that he hates the others, no. but then he sends this on a mission. But then when he picks them and sends them on a mission, it's they have a covenant between them. Yeah. The, it wasn't that you live as you please, but as long as you remember, I'll send you. Right. No. There is that the, the faithfulness that has to be in them. And God says, you're going to be this way. Mm. You make sure you're obedient. Mm. Right. And I promise mm. I will be with you. you. I'm going to make you my special people. Mm. What makes them special? Mm. It's the... the the fact that God chose them and God sent them on a mission. And when you realize about this choosing, the text that I read, that I think it, it, it was Genesis, he says, or was it Deuteronomy? One of the two. It actually says, you're going to be, a, you are special to the Lord your God. Right, Deuteronomy. There are many people who may be, not believe in the fact that you are special. Yes. You may not be special to everybody. Mm. So note, yeah. I look at that even as us. How many people believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, God's remnant church, and send on a mission? Right. Do not let that offend you, the fact that um, people do not believe you're special to the Lord your God. Don't right. seek to be special to any demon that is around. And so don't let that discourage you. But then there is that contract that God has with us, is that... Mm -hmm. um, that he had even with ancient Israel. But now, he then extends that mission to us. He brings it to us who are his disciples. Mm -hmm. That you be true. We read in the text that you be true to God's commandment and all his statutes. Right. And he has sent, he has picked you, made you special and sent you on this mission. Do not forget who you are right. and what he has sent you. And for this message to go through and to bring the right fruits, you have to keep your side of the covenant and yes. God will keep keep his and right. this message will get to the right people and do that which God wants us to do. Okay. Thanks, Sister Cindy. You know, the channel of, his, uh, of, of, of this mission, the channel of, of the mission. You see, in 1 Timothy 3.15, it says, so that I am delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. And this is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of truth the channels that we have to go through mm. for this mission. You know, I, I was just reading Isaiah 49, verse 6. He says, he says, it is too small, I think, for you to be my servant, to restore the tribe of Jacob and bring back those of Israel have I kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Yes. You know, when, 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 through this channel, mm -hmm. you know, Christ came into even into this channel that he can bring even a light right. to those who even don't even care to know him. True. Israel was supposed to be, as, 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 as you have heard before, mm -hmm. that channel in which people could say, you know what, this people is a bit peculiar people, right. the way how they would serve their God. God, God. God says, you know, when you do, and even we, we speak about the Sabbath, it says, when you keep my Sabbath, it shows that you belong to me. Mm -hmm. And when people see how you look and how you obey my law, they will say that you are wise and good people. Yes. Y you know, it's for us in today's day, that when we obey, though people may say we are, we are to the letter people. Yep. It shows that being obedient is better than sacrifice. Yes. And so to be obedient, and as my sister rightly said, if, if your parents send you somewhere mm -hmm. and you dilly-dally along the way, <laughs> the chances are you might not be the next person. If, if, if say you have a, a, a bunch of siblings, you might not be the next one to send. Right. So here again, it's the person who desires to be obedient to God. Yes. That God can use to show mm -hmm. who he is. Yes. Because that is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Who he is and the love that he has right. for his people. 
Good. Uh, can I say Go this? ahead. Uh, listen to this. This is found in Ezekiel chapter 33. You can read from verse 7 and verse 8. It says, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Yes. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and mm -hmm. warn them from me. Yes. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. die. Yep. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked man from his way, that wicked man shall die in his in iniquity, iniquity, but mm -hmm. his blood will I require at thine hand. Yes. So this is just a warning. Yes. There's the converse, blessing or a curse, yes. right? If you say you are a disciple of Jesus, yes. then you are going to do all that he has commanded. Yeah. Okay. If we do not give the warning, mm -hmm. then the individuals will die in their iniquity, but, and but we are responsible for their... Yes. Yes. Okay. The mission of the Church of Christ is to save perishing sinners. Mm -hmm. It is not to make known the love of God to men and to win them to Christ by efficacy of that love. The truth for this time must be carried out into dark corners of the earth. And this work must begin at home, right here in the church. The followers of Christ should not live selfish lives, but be imbued with the spirit of Christ. They should work in harmony with him. Their causes for the present coldness and unbelief, the love of the world and the care for life separate from the soul of God, from God. The water of life must be in us, flowing out of us, springing into everlasting life. He must increase his effort and bring others to the knowledge of the truth. His life must be characterized by the exertion and sacrifices to do others good. And there, then there, be no complaint of the lack of enjoyment. Right. So far, I hope you are getting into the understanding that God has a mission for us wherever you are. The world, the arena, and the mission. The arena is that big thing, the grand show. What is it in this mission that will culminate God's mission for us? Let us look at Revelation 7, 9, and 10. And it reads from New King James, King James Version. After these things I looked, and behold a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongue, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And verse 10, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb of God. Why is this text far-reaching, Elder? And how does it reach us from a geographical scope? Right. I believe that the, um, the Bible is saying to us that the gospel cuts across culture. Mm -hmm. It cuts across nationality. Yes. It cuts across um, status. Yes. And social standing. Good. So when it comes to the gospel, we have to um, preach the gospel to every individual. That's true. That's why it says in Matthew 24, verse 14, it says, this gospel of the kingdom yes. shall be preached preach in all, all the world, world for a witness. Amen. Then shall the end come. Yes. Yes, go ahead. You know, just as you think about the arena, I was just thinking of, of a sports arena. Yes. There's a spectacle in a sports arena, and there are few people that... <clears throat> Sorry, that would be showcasing there's a worldwide view around like, what is happening in yes. that arena. Mm -hmm. And in this arena, here we are now set up on to preach this gospel that those around, and when you look at what the, the text that you have just read, there are people from different angles that were from different places that were drawn. Why were they drawn? Because they were hearing the word, and that word that was preached by those disciples, mm -hmm. or us the, as disciples, yep. they are now following up on what we have said, what we, the life that we have lived, and they themselves are now accepted. Why? Because of what they have seen. Right. You, you know, sometimes when you see, and I was just saying in our arena, you might see a, a running activity. 
You know, after, after you finish watching the TV and you're watching all the running, you're so excited about it that you go outside now and you begin to run. Yes, discipleship, you're in the mood. brother. Discipleship. It's, it, it's the it same is. thing within the discipleship. Yes. They are now in the mood to, you to, know, to this carry was out good. This, this message. This was a good thing. Yes. Let me get into it. Right. And here is where we can see in Revelation okay. how these people just kept, they, they just, that the, the John could see a vast number of people yes. who had listened. Right. And, and was excited about what they hear and what they see. And now they are in with the Lamb waiting and celebrating okay. just to see. Thank you. Jesus sent, when Jesus sent his disciples, he says, go and be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Start within your fold, your mother, your father, your brother, your wife, your children. <laughs> Make sure they know the message of the mission. Yes. And then he says, then you'll be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria. Right. Remember your neighbor. So as you go out, make sure the, everybody in your neighborhood has. But then don't stop there. Go everywhere, out yes. of the country, neighboring yes. countries, right. to those who believe and don't believe Afghanistan and Spain. <laughs> yes. Make sure they know because the arena of the mission is the whole Amen. wide world. Amen. Thank you for listening to us today. In, in fact, we're looking at God's mission to us, part two. And so to close this um, uh, week's lesson, we were just going to take our final takeaway. Sister Cindy. Stay focused. The focus of the mission don't get carried away about everything that happens around. Remember, we have been sent on a mission. Be obedient and stay focused. Thank you. The gospel is an eternal gospel. Yes. There's no change. Good. Jesus came to save sinners. That's all we are. Sinners willing to allow Jesus to save us. Amen. Elder Fritz? Yes, I, I love the Bible so much. Because irrespective of the controversy and how Satan works, yes. yet you can see the people of God triumph. Yes. And they are victorious. Good. They are with Jesus forever and yes. forever. Mm -hmm. So the gospel is just to bring us back to Jesus so that he can save us by his grace. Amen. The Savior's words, he are the light of the world, point to the fact that we've been committed to his followers from a worldwide mission. As a ray of sun penetrates the remotest corner of the globe, so God designed that the light of the gospel shall extend to every soul on earth. Amen. If the church of Christ were fulfilling the purpose of our Lord, light would be shed upon all that sit in the darkness and in the region of the shadows of death. Instead of congregating together and shunning responsibility and cross-bearing, the members of the church would scatter into all all lands, letting the light of Christ shine out from them, working as he did in this, for the salvation of the soul. And for this, the gospel of the kingdom shall be speedily spread in all the world. May God bless you as you continue to listen to his words. The mission of God came primarily to save people from their sin. May God bless you as we pray. Let us pray. Our loving God, we want to thank you for the plan of salvation, whereby Jesus voluntarily became our substitute, taking upon himself our sins and paying the debt that we deserve to pay. And we thank you and we rejoice in him for his blood cleanseth from all sins. So we ask you to continue to bless this church and bless everyone. And I pray that when Jesus comes, we can all find a place in his kingdom. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Join us again for lesson three. It's a pleasure to be with you in your homes or wherever you are in the world. And as always, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Goodbye. <laughs>
hearts with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing of when your love came down I could sing of your love I know But when the world has seen the light They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever
sound. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be here this morning? Are you really happy to be here this morning? Amen. All right. Well, we just want to um, make a, a few announcements as we prepare for our family service. And first of all, I just want to uh, mention on behalf of the Blake family, um, they're expressing their appreciation and thanks to the church for their prayers and the support. We had a funeral in the week and it was well supported. We had a number of family members and church members that were there for the funeral of Brother Blake and the family are just wanting to express their gratitude to you um, for those who were able to give them the support during the hard and difficult time in which they were going through. We do have some other funeral dates that I want to present to you and a few that are still to come. But the ones that I um, just want to mention, just for you to kind of keep in your diaries, they are in adv a few months in advance, but on November the 5th, we are looking at a memorial service for Sister Bovell <clears throat> on November the 5th. Um, so please keep that date in mind. It's a Sunday. It will be a memorial service, Sunday the 5th of November for Sister Bovell. Um, <clears throat> and also for uh, the funeral for Jermaine Wong's son, Keenan, the date that we are looking at is Thursday, November the 16th for that funeral. Thursday, November the 16th. So if you can pencil that in as well. Um, we do have some other dates to give you, some other um, funerals that will be taking place surrounding some of the um, challenges we've had in our community as well, but those dates are to be confirmed. So just please bear those dates in mind. Um, 5th of November for Sister Bovell, 16th of November for Keenan Wong. Okay, as we prepare for our music day today, we are going to go into our video announcements. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Brixton Seventh-day Adventist Church. There's a lot happening in our church this month, and we wanted to take a few minutes and share a couple of upcoming events for you and your family. So, take a look. to join the movement and embrace the future of giving? Introducing Mission 30, an alternative way to contribute your free will offering to the Brixton Seventh-day Adventist Church. With Mission 30, you have two fantastic options to make your offering. Simply use or use a friendly card machine to give your donation with a simple tap. No more fumbling for cash or worrying about exact change. Or, if you prefer, scan the QR code available on the back of the benches, notice boards, 
and in the bulletin. Remember, Mission 30 is not a substitute, it's an alternative. So, be part of the change and make a difference with Mission 30. Your generosity fuels the mission. So, make sure you stay connected with us throughout the week online at brixtonsda.co.uk and on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at, and search for at Brixton SDA. Do have a wonderful Sabbath. But for a wonderful worship experience today, Today is not only Music Day in Brixton Seventh-day Adventist Church, it is also Pastor Appreciation Day. And we've been announcing for the last few weeks that today, October 14th, is Pastor Appreciation Day. You see, the month of October has been designated by Christians worldwide as Clergy Appreciation Month. This is the month to honor those who perform ministerial work. But in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the General Conference has designated Sabbath, October 14th today, as a day to give tribute and to honor our pastors and those who serve us, our pastors who serve us very well. You see, God has entrusted the care of our church to the hands of our pastors and their families. And so today I want to invite our pastor to come forward um, in this context, we as a church have a responsibility to give thanks and to recognize the significant role and contribution of our pastors. And so today for the church members, as you go through, not just today, but for the rest of the month, I certainly want to invite you to show your appreciation in words of expression or words of affection to pastors. We're going to invite all our elders to also come and a few of the departments who will share in this moment with us. So any of our elders who are around, please do come forward. And while they're coming, we're going to sing just one verse as of the love at home, just that one verse of love at home while they come so that we can get ourselves together. Love at home. <laughs> Pastor is shaking, don't worry about it, Pastor. <laughs> love at home. So some of our elders, yes, if you are here, there are elders there. We're gonna sing love at home, just the first verse as we try to make this moment. We'll sing together, everyone, go. There is beauty all around when there's love at home. There is joy in every sound when there's love at home. Peace and plenty in the bright, smiling face. Notice some of the some of the boys are around, Pastor. They should come up as well, no? <laughs> so no it's the one. Come, come into the box. He's shy. All right, we won't show him too much. But you can imagine there are 168,000 Seventh Day Adventist churches all over the world, and all of all of the churches today should be saying thanks to our pastors and those who serve us. And we have pastors, some of our departments who would want to say their words of appreciation to you for your time with us. And I'm gonna. Start off with the, the smallest ones from the children's ministry. In the mic. Is the mic. This card is a token. This card is a token of love and appreciation from the children's ministry for being our pastor. Amen. Right, so we just want to say thank you, Pastor, for always being there for us, and we really do appreciate the service you offer. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
the, of course, the care of the younger members of our church family is very important. So I'm glad to have the children's ministry. I'm going to ask Sabbath school as well. So I'm going to ask Sister Pauline to just say a few words as well. Happy Appreciation Day, Pastor. And I just want to thank you for always encouraging me and always being there for Sabbath school. I just want to I implore you that you should always continue to keep your eyes on Jesus. May he continue to rejuvenate you, you know, revive you, and as you continue to lead this flock, may you continue to be the best you can, and God bless you in your ministry. God bless you. Now we know, we know today is a special day for music day, so we want to give pastor the chance to just enjoy the worship. But as elders, we have all our elders here and the church board represented by our church clerk. We also want to say thanks to Pastor and his family on behalf of all of us for what Pastor has done. Who remembers when Pastor joined us here? Yes. Which month was it? Yes. February? September? <laughs> February, which year? Last year. And boy, we really have enjoyed Pastor's ministry with us here at church. His leadership, his guidance on the board, his calm demeanor. You know what his pastor is never ruffled. Whatever it is, he's always, always just calm and collected. And I, we appreciate you, Pastor, for what you've done for this church, for the community as well. I think many people will not realize, but Pastor attends the different events in the community quite a lot with his other ministerial colleagues. And so the work he does in the community is also recognized. And he was saying to me the other day that when we had a very tragic, sad um, occurrence just close to our church here, the people were just saying, pastor is here, pastor is here, pastor is here. And I know he was saying, how do they know? It is because of the work you do, pastor. The influence, it is there in your own way. People are recognizing the contribution you give to this district of where we are resident. So on behalf of our church, I'm going to ask our church um, clerks to just present to you what we hope will be a, a, a token to help you to remember today, but not just today, but all the days. So I'm going to ask our church clerk, so just present this to you. Pastor Daly, on behalf of the church membership and also the church clerk position, I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do for the church. For each one of us, you've encouraged us, you've led us, and continue to lead us. And we want to present you with this plaque, um, which just says, for your dedicated service to our church and community, we thank you. Praise God for your ministry. It's a two-part thing. It's not just a, a thing here. There's another part that is much more enjoyable that we won't touch. It's for him and his family to really enjoy something away from church. That would be much more fun and enjoying. So we're going to give this to you, Pastor, for you and your family to enjoy. Of course, we know that pastoral ministry is difficult work. And I don't know you know this, the strain it has on our pastors to carry the challenges, the prayers, the benefits, the family problems, everything. They carry it on their shoulders every day. And sometimes they don't say to us, but we know it's there. And it's not just about what they get, as you know. It's, 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 the challenge they have is, is real. And so today we want to pray pastor up as well, not just with tokens and gifts, but we also want to pray him and his family up that God will continue to strengthen him and keep him. And I hope that you will also be praying for pastor daily. You get that one? <laughs> Did you get that one? You didn't get it? Did you get it? Okay. We're going to ask. Um, yes, we're going to have pastor daily say a few words and then elder Sammy will pray for us. That's all right. Yes, pray daily. <laughs> That's good. I just want to uh, express my appreciation and thanks to the church and for everyone up here for these kind, kind words that have been said and for the words of appreciation and the gifts that I've received as well. It's well meaningful. In fact, it almost seems like I'm leaving Brixton Church <laughs> with these gifts. Um, but I sense the appreciation from Brixton on a daily basis. Uh, when I come here every Sabbath, I do feel the warmth and I do feel the love from the Brixton members. And I can't even walk from one end of the hall to the other after church without individuals telling me to come and sit with them and eat with them. I do feel the love here. And I know that Appreciation Day is a significant day 
but I just want to thank God for the appreciation I receive on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Okay. Um, and I speak this on behalf of my wife, who I, uh, um, most of you know is not able to be with me presently, and my children as well. Um, thank you very much for your love and your prayers and your kind support. Thank you. Can we just stand for this prayer? Let us pray. Our eternal and righteous Father, we, we deem it a pleasure that you are our Father and our God. And Father, you have seen it wise that we have leaders who will lead your flock into your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for our pastor, Pastor Daly. We thank you for his family, for his wives. Lord, I ask that you continue to just be with this man of God. Continue to empower him, continue to give him strength to carry the work forward. It's not an easy task, but Father, with you in the vessel, Pastor can smile at the storm. So Father, help him to always keep you in front, center, behind, around him, Continue to be an edge around him and his family. Continue to help us, Father, as we help him in this work. We thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath to you all. Um, yeah, I'm so happy to see you all today. I'd like to ask everyone, how has everyone's week been? Has anyone had a good week? Show of hands. Anyone with a good week? Amen. Anyone with a all right week? Just all right? Okay. Yeah. Anyone with a bad week? Sometimes they come. But I think what the main thing is, despite how our weeks have been, we're privileged to be sitting or standing here today. It's an awesome wonder of the fact that every single day we wake up or in the night when we're not even thinking about breathing or our hearts beating or our lungs expanding and, and compressing again, we are still here. And it's not by our own might. Our bodies do this by itself. But by the, and by the will of God giving us breath to even do that. And so here we are on our music day, which is entitled Our Worship. And this is the worship that we give to God. It might look different based on our cultural background or how we grew up or where we're from. But at the end of the day, we're giving this to God. And I believe as long as it's a genuine, heartfelt worship that reflects everything that he's done, even if God didn't do anything else for us, he truly deserves it because he is God. Amen. So Psalms 29, Psalms 29 verse 1 says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
And so that's what we're going to focus on. This is what we're going to do today on Music Day as we worship. So the first song we're going to sing together is the intro. It's a new one, but it's a beautiful one written by an Adventist songwriter in the USA, Stephen Manders, called Adoration. And it says simply, be your glory, honor, adoration. Lord, we bless your name. And we will bless your name in adoration. Glory to your name. Lord Almighty reigns. Let's sing.
chapter 29, verses 11 to 14 says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and all in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted head above all. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, O God, and praise you for your glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly for all things come from you and you and own all that we have given you. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before you now giving you praise, the honor, and glory for everything that you've done. You've brought us through another week, and there are so many things that could have happened, but you spared our life to see another week. And as we come on this Sabbath day to give you praise, to give you adoration, to give you our worship, we, we pray that you accept it, and it will be acceptable to your throne. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Please be seated. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Oh, it is such a beautiful day, and it's so beautiful to see all of you here today. Now, we've talked about the fact that the theme for the day is our worship. So this is going to be our welcome. So it's going to be interactive, and I need, I need a few people just to tell me, what does worship mean to you? What does worship mean to you? So anybody, I've got my flat shoes so I can run. So... What does worship mean to you? I just need two or three people. Two or three people. What does worship mean to you? Tell me. Anybody? Okay, give me. For me, worship means giving God thanks for all that he has done for his goodness and his mercies towards us. Anybody else? What does worship mean to you? What does worship mean to you? Recognizing whom God is, what he does for me, what he means to me, and giving him the glory and thanks. Amen. All right, one more person, one more person. What does worship mean to you? What does worship mean to you? One more person. Um, it means humbling yourself before your maker and creator so that he can forgive you of your sins if you come in sincerity. Amen. Amen. So, and so thank you. Oh, there's one more person then. Go ahead. Go ahead. Worship mean to me is to, is to praise God. Worship him in songs and praise to the almighty. Worship him for who he is. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for making this so, so, um, such a beginning, such a wonderful beginning to our service. So I had a look. I had a look at what the definition of worship is. And I said, it says, worship is when we give our deepest affections and our highest praise to something. True worship of God is when we love him with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our mind. It is when we prize God above everything else, and we put God first in our hearts. So that means that worship is not just a day. That means that worship is not just when we just sing. It is in everything we do. So that means that that means that when we wake up in the morning, we worship God. When we go to work, we worship God. When we eat, we worship God. When we're driving, this one is for me. When we're driving and somebody cuts in front of you, you need to be worshiping God because worship is in everything we do. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, And so, dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because he's done so much for us. Let it be a holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way that we worship him. 
Amen. So I'm going to extend a well warm welcome to you, our worship, our praise, and so we're going to give our welcome to each other. We're going to welcome each other, and we're going to sing, I'm glad you're here, and welcome each other in our worship. Amen. And so I pray that you will be blessed today and that you will give God your highest praise. Amen.
morning, church. In keeping with today's theme, an, an expression of worship, knowing God through giving. Giving is a spiritual relationship issue with God. Through giving, we praise God for the blessings of having the abundance and means to offer back to him that which he has already given us. Through returning of our tithes and offerings, we praise God in an act of worship. We learn to trust God through giving, and giving becomes a joyous experience and a deep-rooted, sacred part of our personal relationship with God. Deacons, please take up your positions. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day, God. As we are gathered here today on Music Day, we unite as one body, Lord, to share in this worshipful act of returning our tithes and offering. Father, we pray that it may be a sweet odor, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to you, O oh God. Thank you for the abundance, that the fact that you have ensured that we you know, come through each week knowing that we had food to eat, we had shelter, Father God, what's left? Help us touch our hearts to be generous to return that to you, O oh God. Father, I pray for the program today, and I ask that as the deacons are preparing to collect the offering, that, Father, we will yield a good yield today, and, Father, that it will go towards the expansion of this church and the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, a video to follow. Chad, a landlocked country located in the heart of Africa, is home to the Biri Adventist Hospital the only healthcare facility in the region. Doctors Olen and Dane Nettenberg oversee it, along with their family. When parents dedicate their lives to serving as missionaries, their children are also missionaries. Despite their young age, the Nettenberg kids are also passionate about sharing the good news of Jesus with those they encounter. Six-year-old Juniper has a soft spot for animals. She loves it when locals bring them to their compound, a cluster of houses surrounded by a wall. Mango trees abound in their compound, and during the mango season, they don't need dinner, as they can pick the fruits from the trees. Together with their mom, she distributes baby clothes and blankets to new mothers while sharing the message of Jesus. Eight-year-old Addison enjoys visiting nearby villages where shepherds and farmers live off the land. On Sabbaths, the family travels to remote villages to worship God under a large mango tree. There, they share Bible stories and songs with children and their parents. Ten-year-old Zane loves to swim in the river during summer, but he had to change rivers after hippos took over their usual spot. Zane enjoys making things, especially bows and arrows. His Chadian friends are experts in making fantastic things out of trash, like cars and airplanes. And Zane is happy to share with his local friends how much Jesus loves them. At just 13, Lyle has a unique perspective on life. She knows that her parents are dedicated healthcare professionals, working tirelessly to care for the sick and keep the hospital running smoothly. But that's not all. Her father homeschools Lyle and her siblings. Despite the severe nature of their work, Lyle and her family find joy and fulfillment in their daily activities, all while spreading the love of Jesus to those around them. With their unwavering commitment to obeying God, Lyle knows anything is possible. Supporting ministries and spreading God's message of love, even in remote places, some of whom who have never heard of, is only possible because of the unity in the work of the church. When you give the tithes and allow your offerings to be distributed, as suggested by the combined offering plan, you're not just helping to support Lyle and her family in their mission to share the good news of Jesus. You're also supporting at the same time over 400 missionary families around the globe. As global mission pioneers who are working tirelessly to bring hope to those in need, remember that together we do more. Go farther and go faster. Jesus is coming. May we put our desires last and God first.
So I guess before, oh wait, you see some beautiful people standing here. Um, before we sing, I'll introduce you. This is the Brixton Music Day Gospel Choir. Um, so it's just a group of individuals that like to sing and um, have been formed for today. So I hope you're blessed by this song. It's called Everybody Clap Your Hands um, because that is one of the ways that we can praise him. So please praise with us. Thank you. 
Amen. So that's one of the ways we praise him. <laughs> um, so now we're going to continue with praise and worship. So that includes you. I hope you were singing along to that one anyway. And the first song we're going to sing is How Great Is Our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see what church? How great, how great is our God. Amen.
singers. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high.
So now where do we learn about Jesus? How do we even learn about Jesus? Through his holy word, the Bible, ancient words, long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. So let these ancient words impart. Let's sing together. Changing me and changing you We have 
on the upward way new heights we're for gaining every day still praying we have to remember to pray church still praying as we onward go lord plant my feet on higher ground we want to go higher we need to go higher we need to elevate church Yeah. 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 
Trials lead me asking for more No matter what I go through My experience will be renewed Father, revive All the love that I have deep inside And make room for your grace to abide to see that the Jesus in me is real. Will you restore all the joy that I had once before? Till my trust leave me asking for more. No matter what I go through, my experience will
and the appropriate time for prayer. through this barren land I am weak but thou art mighty hold me with thy powerful hand our sovereign Lord in this Sabbath day a day earmarked to worship through music I pray that you will give our joyful hearts the voice to sing your praises Lord like David we come before your presence with joyful hearts to sing and recognize that is you have made us and not we ourselves. So Lord, we pray that you'll come in our hearts today. Lord, we give thee thanks for the fact that you've given us the gift of music and that in this church, our worship is enriched by music here and around the world. We pray that you will continue to bless each member of this music department and that their ministries will continue to inspire our hearts. Lord, today, as we worship, we pray that the songs we sing will sustain us and the praises from this congregation will inspire us. May the solid music from your heart, O oh God, be with us as it comes from the Godhead. Dear Lord, Today we come to you with heavy hearts, seeking your grace and healing power for the sick and the vulnerable. And so Lord, we pray that in this time, in a changing world, a world that is full of pain, suffering, despair, and destruction, that you will heal those people of the Middle East that we pray for peace and safety and that at the end there'll be security for them to endure. We pray that the conflicts may cease and that we may find security and stability that we so desperately need. Lord, we come back into your church and we remember those who are sick. I pray for my mother who has a very fatal diagnosis today that you will find a place to comfort her, my Lord. I pray that we will lift up the vulnerable and the marginalized and the oppressed. Lord, we pray that justice will prevail and may their burdens be lightened. Grant them the strength to overcome adversity 
that they might find hope in the midst of their struggle. O oh God, angel of the light, worship you. Be present in this church today as those who seek to testify of your marvelous power and divine intervention will do so knowing that, Lord, you've never let them down. I ask you, O oh Lord, to grant us even now a glimpse of the beauty that is in heaven and make us worthy as we seek to be inspired by thy mighty and bountiful hands. Dear Lord, I pray. Lord, for those who are yet in this congregation to confess you as Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, let them say with ultimate conviction that in times like these we need a Savior. In times like need these, we need an anchor, one that will fasten and hasten our footstep where we can sing like men of old. Oh Lord, you are our solid rock. And finally today, Lord, as we pray, may we leave here with the words of this hymn writer. Wake the song of joy and gladness, pouring forth the highest praise. Sing to him who care, whose care has brought us. May we sing, Lord, with heart that is gathered and swell with sincerity. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit, I pray, as we, we draw close to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Unto
Amen, church. Amen, amen. amen. So we're now we're going to have a little bit more praise and worship. <laughs> what is music day without praise and worship? <laughs> so the first song we're going to sing is, a, is another new one. But I guess music day is where you kind of introduce songs and we learn something new to carry to somewhere else, okay? So it's called Always. So it goes, Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. I trust you always. Father, I need you. Can't live without you. Father, I trust you always. So it's one of those ones that will remind you every time you're going through something, let me tell myself, Father, I trust you. Be with me, you'll be 
Sing your majesty, I worship you. Royalty. 
song is like, it's one of my favorite songs. It's always a reminder, like, that you, Lord, you are worthy. And the thing is, no one else in this world can worship him for me. And as long as I am breathing, I will always worship him. Because he deserves it. Like, Like, despite everything that goes on in our lives, he is truly worthy of all the praise that we could ever give. And I think that's what the message of all these songs are for me. And I pray that it's your heart's song and prayer to you. So, you, Lord, you are worthy, and no one else can worship you for me.
So have you received the worship today? God has been so good to us. What does worship mean to you? Anybody like to answer that question? What does worship mean to you? How has worship impacted your life? Let me see the hands who'd like to answer those questions. Yeah, worship means experiencing God's presence daily, every moment of my life. That's worship, and I praise his name in the holy place. Amen. For me, worship is being so grateful for being alive every day. Worship the great creator who's coming to make this world clean and spotless without sin. Thank you. Is there anyone who would like to give a testimony of how the Lord has impacted your life through worship? Anyone? There's a hand there. Um, a few years ago, I had um, quite a serious health experience, and I did speak about it in church. But to be honest with you, what got me through it was worship. I worshipped my way through the first surgery, all the way to the ninth surgery, I worshipped. And if I'm completely honest, I have learnt, I know some of you can see, I've learnt to worship by myself, as well as collectively. So if I come in here and no one feels like worshipping, I will still worship. So thank you, Lord. Happy Sabbath, church. Um, to me, worship is living my life in a way that glorifies the Lord. And I had a testimony. I was in, I was in Sainsbury's, and a person saw me with my crutches. Um, and I, was, I couldn't put the shopping bag and hold my crutches. So I went up to the security guard and was like, I'm not stealing anything. I'm just going to pull it in my bag straight and then go to the till. And he's like, fine. He's like, are you all right? And I was like, praise the Lord. I'm all right. I'm smiling. And he stood back. And he was like, yeah, praise the Lord. And I walked on a little bit further and the man's still watching me. And I said, God is good. And he was like, yes, God is good. He's looking at me with my crutches and like, yes, God is good. I walked around and a little old man saw me putting the milk in there. And I think he's thinking she's trying to steal out the stuff. And I was just smiling at him. So he came up to me and he was like, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm all right. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm getting better. He was like, what happened? I said, I was in an accident, but by God's grace, I'm here. The man stood back again and he was like, yes, yes, thank God. And I was like, Lord, you brought me in here in crutches. And just because I thank you for what you've done for me, other people have realized that you are God. And I call that worshiping in our life. Every day we should be worshiping and it gives a testimony how God good is. Amen, amen. Is anyone else? Um, this is a testimony of how God has come true for someone else because of how I trust him and how I pray. She was such, in such a difficult situation and she called and she was saying, Pauline, can you pray? Put up the prayer for me, Pauline, please. And praise God through those prayers that, I, I mean, it's, I don't think it's supposed to be alone praying, but through those prayers, she could call yesterday and say, I didn't want to call you a long time, but I know England time in our time is different. Praise God. Whatever it is, God has come true for me. I trust him. And I'm praying that through those prayers that God had answered for her, she will give her life to him. That's praise and worship. Amen. Amen. We thank you.
thank the Lord for what he's done for us. And he, he blesses us every day, right? We get blessings every day. Oh, sorry. One person, one other person. Praise the Lord. I want to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. What I want to worship the Lord for, he woke me up this morning and he set me on my way rejoicing. And I just want to give him all the glory and all the praise that due unto his name. You pray for me while I pray for you in Jesus' name. So sorry, just wanted to just, just, to, just to say a word, you know. That song, God be praised. Yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna. It's my favorite song today. And um, we we heard this song many many years ago. It is the, 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 the it is the passion with which the words are said. It's not. A, it's not. God be praised. It's a, It's a, It's just a strong statement. And so yesterday when I woke up and doing my devotion, I said, let me send something to my wife to cheer her up because we love that song. We love it. We love it. We love it. We love it. And I said it to her. And I said, and, and when she reached home last, I said, I played five times. <laughs> she didn't know I played six times. I played six. Because the words are so true. When you know God, all you can say is, God be praised. That's all that needs to be said. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, I think all of us should leave here with one thing on our mind. God.
that's the end of the service. Like things happen, but at the end of the day, in spite of things going great, going bad, like I don't even know how to convey this. Like God is just God. God is just God all by himself. And he's given us the privilege to even be here today, to know him, to, to love him, everything. And so for that, finally we sing Revelation 19 verse 1. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. So church, I'd like for you to stand with us as we sing this. As a uniform choir of people, as believers together, we'll sing hallelujah, salvation and glory. If you know you're an alto and a tenor, soprano, please sing your part with the choir. And let's give God the glory because he deserves it.
Spirit of the Lord has been in the place today. We have had church. We have had worship. How many of you have been richly blessed by our music today, today? And let us just thank once again all those who have been involved. Our own church choir. Give them a hearty amen for starting this whole process and lifting us up in the way that they have done. We have had our music day gospel choir who have led all through the service. So we give them a hearty amen. And to our praise team and our instrumentalists, we thank God for their ministry today. My heart has been lifted and I have been strangely warmed by the presence of God here today. And I pray that you have to do it if you're visiting with us today. The Spirit of God has spoken to your heart and you have been moved by what has happened today. We would like to meet with you. We have a pastoral team just come and speak with us at the front here. We'd like to just give you some literature and welcome you into to the family of God by just thanking you for your presence here today. And for those of members who are here today and you're here every week, let us truly know that we serve a mighty God who is able to do all things. The words of the songs that we have heard today are powerful. And I pray that the sermon which we did not have was through the words of those songs that we heard today. So let us be lifted up today and go home rejoicing that we have been in the presence of God. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you have spoken to us today through song, through, through the words of, of music, that the, the message has been preached today through testimony for those who have shared what God has done for them and declared what worship means to them. We thank you, Lord, that we serve a mighty God who is able to do all things. And we know, dear Father, that whatever the enemy tries to do, what he ever, whatever he tries to bring, we know that he is already defeated because we serve a risen Savior. And so, mighty Lord, we thank you that we can worship you in, in music. We thank you for the sound of voice. We thank you for the hymns that have been sung and for the powerful words of inspiration that those hymns represent. May we leave here now with your presence in our hearts. May we know that we have been in your presence and may you allow us to leave this place with our hearts lifted and rejoicing that we have truly been in the house of God. To this end, we thank you and we lift your name in praise for you are worthy to be praised. May your name be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
part of our worship service experience. To stay connected with us throughout the week, you can find us at brixtonsda.co.uk. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the latest sermon videos and more. Or if your preferred channel is either Instagram or Facebook, you can find us at Brixton SDA. Have a wonderful Sabbath and a productive week.